Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for mCreator. Today I am going to uh, show you how you can make a loot table using procedures rather than using the built-in uh, loot table function. So uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, correctly set up a chest uh, kind of block that will have a GUI and then you need to have a GUI link to that block and uh, then we'll work on the procedures in the next part. So in order to get your uh, chest block set up properly, what you wanna do is go to the inventory tab here. Uh, it says blocks title or block tile entity and inventory. So you wanna enable this. Uh, you want to set this number to how many slots you're going to have. So always um, increase the number by one for because slots will start at zero and then count up to eight. So this would be only technically eight slots in the inventory if you were to count from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because nine would be the uh, eighth slot so this starts with one so one two three four five six seven eight and nine uh, your slot uh, amount so this would be set to 64 and uh, this is okay to have either if you don't want it that's okay too but uh, these two things are important to set up properly if you're gonna have an output slot for your uh, GUI you're gonna have to input it in your uh, this text box here say we wanted uh, to set it to uh, two then we would do two maybe you wanted three then you would put a comma and then go and put three uh, no spaces but we don't have any um, output slots so that's fine so when you're finished with that just uh, basically save that and and move on to the GUI. So when you open up the GUI, what you want to do is you want to go and under the end or bind uh, GUI to block, and then you want to select your block that you're binding it to. Uh, this also has to be the same block that you're opening the inventory for on the right click. So it will run into problems if you don't set it up this particular way. And then again with the uh, slots, uh, I'm only using nine for this tutorial, but you can use as many as you want. Uh, the code is pretty dynamic on how you want to set it up. Uh, zero and then to eight, so that's exactly nine slots as you can see here. So once you have all this set up, uh, what you can do is just save that. And then what you need is, I believe this is, that's the actual code, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, you need a right click event for the block itself so this basically opens the G, uh, GUI so you want to go to player and then scroll down to open GUI and then you want to place that on the main group here and now for the actual chess block well, what you want to do is a few things I have um, actually set up some variables to uh, basically link the um, the numbers to specific groups, but uh, you don't necessarily need to use variables. It's just a little bit easier to work with when it's testing for one specific number. Then you can get a, a random loop based on the thing. It's a little bit more accurate that way. So to do that, what you need is to set up a number variable on the side here. It's just a local variable. So you want to go look number and then you want to type the name in. I've named it random number um, slot and then the slot number. So once you have that set up, uh, you just want to basically set uh, the variable. So if you go to the variables, set variable and then go to the math and then put a random operator or random number uh, generator on there and that's all you basically need to do for each one of your slots at the top of the uh, code here. Uh, basically how code works in any code language is it starts at the top and then it reads it uh, going downwards so uh, all your basically starter up things that are going to be used in the uh, the actual code below needs to be at the top of the document or it won't work properly. So just make sure that this is up here and um, then you can start putting in your uh, random loop tables. So basically what this is doing is because when the block is uh, placed down it's going to basically um, 
uh, check to see if the slot number is equal to error. And if so, then what it's going to do is uh, check for the random number so that all these numbers are going to be the same now because we've uh, basically set it up to one variable. So it's going to be checking the variable, uh, the same variable over the course of this. So it's going to start with uh, if it's greater than, actually that doesn't seem right, does it? Okay, so one second here. Um, no, that's that's correct. Okay, so if it's greater, no, that, that can't be right. Okay, let me just fix this up a little bit uh, in just one second and I'll get back. All right, I've changed around the code just a little bit, so I know this particular code will work uh, perfectly fine. Um, now, you want to set this to equal to or greater than, and then what you want to do is uh, basically what it's going to do is it's going to check for the, the variable for slot zero, uh, which is all going to be the same because it's under a variable now. And if it's greater than 75, uh, which is only a 25% chance, then it's going to uh, give a diamond. If it's uh, lower than that, then like that's going to check for the next one if it's uh, not that number. So the next thing on the list is 0 0.5 which is a 50% chance. So if that's true, then it's going to run that. If not, it's gonna move down to the next one. And if it's greater than uh, or equal to 25 or 0 0.25, it is a 75% uh, chance. It's gonna give an iron ignit. And if that's still not true, if it's under 25% or, or 70, under 25 in the variable, then what it's going to do is just uh, spawn error. So basically what that basically does is um, how this is all set up is it's going to set the uh, set one item to uh, slot zero at the current location. And this is the item that it's going to set it to. And what you're going to want to do is duplicate this. And we have slot two, slot four, slot six, and slot eight all set up. So what you want to do is update these um, numbers here, this one, that one, that one, that one, and finally that one. And then you're going to do that for each individual slot number. Now the last thing that you want to do before you save and compile this is make sure that you are sending or checking for the right variable. Now up here, we basically set all the different variables to have different numbers. So uh, each item will, or each slot will have its own uh, random um, number. So what we need to do is, this is set up for slot zero. All these, because we cloned it, are set to slot zero. So what we need to do is set it to the respective uh, slots for those um, inventory. So that was slot two, this is slot four. Uh, this is why it would be a good idea to indicate on your variable what kind of slot it is. And this is slot six. So you wanna just make sure this is all set up properly. And finally, uh, slot eight. So when we get down here, uh, what we'll do is we'll save this and then we'll hop in game and I'll show you how it all works. So before I forget, um, what you need to do is also set your right click event for, to open the GUI to your block here and uh, the procedure that you're going to have for your um, the block um, uh, for actually generating the thing can either be under a right click event or it can be under um, uh, when block added is probably best to have it when block added so what you would want to do is um, basically empty your like place it down in your structure if you're having it generate in a random structure or something like that empty the like it'll generate the or immediately empty the or and then what you want to do is just close it and then it won't generate again but when it generates in the structure what it will do is update the uh, items again so another thing that I should probably note now is 
uh, people will be able to get the items over and over again if they to pick up or break the block. So you might want to make a very uh, uh, like a cloned block of this without the procedure to generate the ore, and just have this particular block drop that particular block there, and um, then people won't be able to uh, cheat and basically get the um, items repeatedly through the generation. So you're basically making two of these blocks, but one doesn't have the actual loot table procedure that opens and does all that other stuff. So um, just a small tip there. So let's quickly hop in game and I'll uh, show you how it all works. So if we basically place down our block, uh, what it will do is automatically uh, generate the items. So as soon as we click on it, it'll, the items will already be generated. Uh, so for if you're placing a structure down and you're basically generating a structure then what you would want to do is place it down like this and then remove the items so when you go to open it again it's empty and then you would save your structure and when the structure is added this block also gets added so then it will generate the, the items again so another thing that people would be able to do is just pick it up and place it down and get more types of items as well so uh, this basically can be fixed by um, just making sure that it drops a different type of block and this is basically an unobtainable block only can be found in structures and stuff like that so basically what you would do is just have a block that has the same textures and everything like that same settings everything uh, easiest way to do that is clone it just update the right click uh, inventory uh, procedure to open a different inventory and have a different inventory with the same amount of slots for um, this particular block uh, for a, well not this particular one but the same block that would be for your personal use so that would basically uh, be the easiest way to go about doing that and just not link the um, loot table itself to, or like the procedure for the loot table for the, um, the actual personal block. So before I get end the uh, thing, I should probably note that uh, this um, example, the tutorial world and all that other stuff, uh, as well as the files will be on uh, my website so if we head over there quickly I'll show you how to navigate to the example page so when you're at northwestreesgaming.com uh, uh, if you go over to the more tab there's a dedicated amp creator uh, index page with a bunch of other things that I have as well as a link to the amp creator website uh, for your examples, what you want to do is click on the example link and then it will bring you to a brand new um, search, uh, kind of like a search engine that will allow you to read a description of what the block's about and or the tutorial and you'll be able to find the uh, tutorials that I've made in the past. You can click the little number icon here and it'll basically update the a new amount of list. So when you click on the button to view it, it'll bring you to the uh, dedicated page for the actual uh, tutorial as well as the downloads. You can click on the button here for the download or you can watch the older videos. If I've updated the video, then it will be um, also on this list here. So you'll be able to get the, the most recent download and all that other stuff. You can also go in previous and next on these uh, things here. So I've quite improved the uh, whole, um, you know, the navigation for all the, the workspaces and stuff like that. And the download goes to Mega. So if we click on this, it goes to my Mega account, goes directly to the download for the, um, the actual workspace files and uh, textures and stuff like that. So. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit easier for you guys to find where the downloads are. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, uh, click that little silver bell to stay notified, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.